So first and foremost, I, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to come out here. We're very excited to have you here. We want to make sure that with this weekend, um, we maximize it. And one thing Gino attributes a lot of his success to is his mindset, coming in with the weekend with the right intention, really realizing what we want to get out of this, and then from there, putting in a plan of how we're going to move forward after the weekend to give results or take things to the next level. I think I've had a conversation with many of you so far, but I look forward to continuing to connect with everyone this weekend. Uh, we're going to learn, uh, learn a whole lot. I've known these guys been touch for about a year now, and, and uh, about three months back, I moved out to Knoxville. And Some training with the company as well. Um, I'll be a little bit of your tour guide. But if you're not doing the actions every week, if you're not finding, like, blocking off the time to do the broker network, whatever it may be, it's not going to happen. I just want to talk by right manager right finance right. You can always already see sort of the breakdown of systems here. This this is the manager right world over here. And Jennifer has done such an amazing job. And it's, it's, I really do believe it's about getting the right people and the right goals and, and just letting them flourish. Um, she's done a fantastic job. You know, if you look back, Dylan right there, we're talking about the buy right piece of it. You know, you can only do so much. We were just talking a minute ago about I'm a mentality. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do everything. I'm just fine in the beginning, but I mean, it's burnt out, and then and you have to be able to scale and delegate to the right people. But something like what frustrates you about your life and business, I don't have a lot of stuff that frustrates me. The only thing that really frustrates me is trying to scale the education side. So I write that down. That's important. You have to focus on stuff that is actually holding you back. Um, I, I like this one also. What would it take to double your business results? What would it take? You gotta make 100 grand a year? How many phone calls have you got? How many profits do you do? You need to focus on what you're looking for. You need to have energy behind it. So work on that one. What have you tried and not tried? Write down everything you've tried. Write down as far as trying to find deal flow. I mean, these guys started starting something called Deal Dogs. I don't know what the heck that was, but great. Oh. Way. You, you, you can talk about that, right? I mean, these guys, I mean, I think it's something we wanted to do for uh, a very long time. And actually, I do know how. We were at the Atlanta event. And one thing that happens when you guys put yourself out there and you go to these events is that it, it allows you to take a second to network with really great folks and allows you to expand your mind and, and be open to ideas. I think it started with Estella and then I think it went to a Coors Light. And so that maybe, maybe loosened it up a little bit. And then I, you know, I was just talking to some guys that were in the wholesaling business and it was something I always wanted to do. And then it just started, like the idea started coming about how we could piece this into the multifamily business. Because that's really how the wholesaling works. A lot of guys call them direct, they're building their business out, building their systems. And uh, so the ideas started flowing and then you know, uh, this guy and I started talking about it, Dylan and I, and we started talking about, well, this is what it could look like and this is where it could go. This is what it could do for the business. This is what the compensation would look like. We like controlling the whole process if you, have, if you can't you know, tell us. So right. I guess the two things I would take from that is number one, just be radically open minded. I learned that from Ray Dalio, he's a great guy. Be radically open minded. Everyone shuts things down right off the bat. When I heard that thing, I was like, that sounds pretty good. Three years ago, I'd be like, come on, we're going to get guys out on the phone, how are they going to get paid? Just be radically open minded. Be willing to try anything. You know, everyone says they try a lot of stuff. You don't really try a lot of stuff. We really don't. We, we shut it down the minute it comes in so much. Oh, that can't work. But that's impossible. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, just get on the phone and call the brokers. And you know what? You're going to get a lot of rejections. And we all get rejections. Just keep trying and trying and trying. You're eventually going to break through. I think that's a few things. And the other thing, I'm going to keep harping on it. It's about partners. It's really about if you want to scale up, you need guys to help. And it's not just about the money aspect of it, right, Bill? It's about he's going to get on the phone with me on Monday. And we're going to do a Monday morning huddle. And this weekend, I have to have my Monday morning huddle filled out. What did I do last week? Well, I got Jeffrey Gittle on the podcast. That's a huge Woo! win for me. That's my big win. I got him on the podcast. I got Garrett Gunnison on the podcast last week. That's a huge win for me. I want to share that with people. Who am I sharing that? If I'm sharing that with myself, there's no energy behind it. But if I got him, he's pushing me to do it, right? He's been asking for Jeffrey Gittle for like the last year. And I finally pulled it through. But that's exciting, right? That's what life's all about. I mean, just get people. It's all about, I think, relationships and about connections. That's ultimately what we're striving for. We're not striving for money. We're striving for purpose and connection and growth. That's what we're really striving for. So start hooking up with great people. I, I think, so I think it's, it's key to have good a few uh, community bankers with a really good relationship. And then you want your, your sort of does lenders on the agency side. You want a Fannie and Freddie guy. Uh, so you just never know. You may, we came across one of the deals we're looking at today has an HOA component. We're not going to be able to do that to the agencies. Okay, but it's a great deal. So we had to take that to to our folks in the community bank side. So it's just having that big network. So it's like, okay, this fits this bucket, and we know where to go. We can't take a play. And you can hit me. I mean, I can introduce you to the guys that we have on our platform for Fannie and Freddie. So yeah. they're really good. Yeah, a lot of good ones. In there. And it's just a, and not to go too too long on this, but we're looking at the deal in Kentucky the other day, and uh, the first thing the guy said is, I think there's a, a local guy, community banker, that will go 85 percent loan value on this. And so it's, we have basically one, maybe two guys in this market that will do that. Uh, and then we've already kind of uncovered another guy in the Kentucky market. 
You know, it's it's finding about five banks that are small and looking to grow on the community bank side in your market, and you want to go after them. You don't want to go after the regional guys. Okay, you don't want to go after you know, your regions or obviously like Chase and some of these bigger ones. But you want to find the smaller banks looking to grow. They maybe only go up to like ten million bucks on a deal because that's that's their exposure that they will be able to do. But you know, placing the specific assets that makes sense where other guys. Yeah, it's too much headache. It's got to make your way. It's got this. It's not going to work for them. Where you can find a tremendous amount of value for yourself. And uh, this is going to be just a great little park. We'll probably put a few, you know, picnic tables, maybe like a little uh, gondola thing, make this a nice little area where people come, and uh, and turn this into amenity versus this was a nice one. People came in. This was really holding our property back. So we learned so much from that experience to. You know, when we have good inspectors, just keep with them. You know, we, we have a company that we feel good and confident with. We use this other company. We were, we were even going to use this company that had told us the apartment was in, uninhabitable to do the mold remediation in here, and they just fell and that off. Was, that was a company that the tenant had found? Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and we were trying to hire the guy for the work, and I think he knew. That yes. I even sent the reports to other mold companies. They're like, with these numbers, he never should have said that that apartment was uninhabitable. Absolutely. So there was work to be done. Sure, we were not trying to say that, but it was never that point. So I said all that to say it's not easy. You make mistakes. You learn from them. This has um, triggered an entire mold and mildew protocol for the company and how we handle it, extra training. It's, that's the play. That's what we like to do. And uh, you know, I think the, the other things coming through is just, you know, Shan and Jennifer, as, you, as you're seeing everybody's here, great team, right? Great team in place, able to pull it through, and that's sort of the reason that all this, you know, is able to happen. So, what's the typical rental budget on one of these units that you're like a turn? Yeah. So, so well, did this just get turned, or is this just rent? Yeah. So this is just turned. So okay. there was no real like big renovations. We're just talking turns here. Okay. And so we got, you know, we went to the the worldly gray on the walls. And then, and then the paint on the cabinets, and who were you all? Was it even, was it 7800 for both? Mm -hmm. Something like that? So the cabinets are going to get more. Se right? 725 to do the, the cabinets in the kitchen, and uh, the bathroom, and all of the conversion for the paint and trim. Did and change the hardware too? And to replace the floor. That's actually what we are just talking about. So this is original hardware, right? Mm -hmm. So Correct. what to go the oil rub bronze is going to pull it in you know, tighter with mm -hmm. you know, some of this other stuff, and that's probably a $30 expense on something like this, and we can test on the next one, but yeah. Six thousand, which is which, really is a great median income. If you're looking at stuff in the fifty thousands, that's a really good thing. I know earlier um, we were speaking on uh, just a little bit on on how your rent compares to the median income. A quick rule of thumb 
not always, it's not to go by 100%, but a quick rule of thumb is that usually rent is equal to about one third of the, uh, the, the total income or, or a little bit less. Man, I get the Kronas, right, Uncle Sean? If I want a Krona, I get a Krona. That's what's up. We got recorded here? What? They're saying, where are you getting the Kronas from? I say, you know what? I'm in control. I'm in responsibility for myself. If I want a Krona, I'm going to get the Krona. If it's not over there, screw it. I'm going to get it. Life's too short. <laughs>